Hello. Welcome to my Bible study series. I'm uh, not claiming to be a Bible scholar. I'm just sharing with you as I read through the Bible, just some impressions I get from the Lord, a verse that I read, a passage I read. I may think it's really important and I want to share it, or it brings back a memory for me and I want to share those memories. Uh, today, we're in Jeremiah. We're going to start in Jeremiah chapter 8. But the first verse I want to talk about is in Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 23. I think this is a neat uh, passage. And it's a positive passage, something that can bless us. Thus says the Lord, Let not a wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man boast in his might. Let not a rich man boast of his riches. You might be wise, you might be mighty, you might be rich, but don't boast about that, because ultimately that's not important. That's right. But let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me, that I'm the Lord who exercises loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For I delight in these things, declares the Lord. So if we're going to brag, we're going to boast, let's boast, I know Jesus. If we're going to boast, we boast giving the glory to God. Like a little boy who says, you know, between my daddy and me, we know everything. <laughs> between my heavenly father and me, we know everything. Of course, he's the one that knows everything, so it's just between us. So, boast that you know the Lord. That's the only thing we need to boast about. Okay, now let's move on. <clears throat> There's a lot of scriptures that are aimed at pastors. Jeremiah 10, 21. This is a word to pastors. And remember, if you're a pastor, or you're thinking about, maybe God's calling me to be a pastor, Beware, the Lord's going to judge us, myself included, because I'm a pastor, to a higher standard. Remember that. It's, it's a terrifying thing if we take seriously the calling God has on our life. But here's what it says. The shepherds have become stupid and not sought the Lord. They've not prospered. All their flock is scattered. The best thing you can do if you're a pastor is to seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Have the love of God in your life to love your congregation. Your congregation's not your enemy. There's all kinds of things that goes on in every church. Pastors get criticized, sometimes unfairly. <laughs> and, but we've got to recognize as long as a pastor loves his people, demonstrates love for his people, and because he loves them, he will tell them the truth, in a loving way, because he loves them, he wants to show them the Lord and his ways. That's what it, but shepherds have become stupid because they're not seeking the Lord. So it's important to do that. A good prayer down here, he's talking about the shepherds and making mistakes. They don't know the Lord. Here's something though, good, a good prayer. Verse 24, Jeremiah 10, 24. Correct me, O Lord, but with justice. Show me where I'm wrong, Lord, but not, not too harshly, <clears throat> you know. Not with your anger, because you'll bring me to nothing. But, but correct me. Show me where I'm, where I'm going wrong, because I really want to serve you. I think that's a prayer the Lord is very eager to answer. Now, we go over to Jeremiah chapter 11. And there's a plot against Jeremiah. Uh, I was like a gentle lamb led to slaughter, and I did not know they had devised plots against me. But here's what they said. And he goes to the Lord. There's some problems here. People, of course, if a prophet is really doing the work of a prophet, he's going to make enemies. So we just have to understand that. Remember the previous video. Our job is to speak and tell. You know, go to people. Speak. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them the need to repent. Tell them the need to give their life to Jesus. Even if they don't respond, we still go and we tell. But here it says, <clears throat> you know, the, he's been 
prophesying, declaring the word of the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the men here who seek your life. They say, <coughs> excuse me, they say, do not prophesy in the name of the Lord, so you will not die at our hand. I mean, that's a pretty important threat. Jeremiah, you stop this. You stop telling us what God is saying, or you're going to die. We're going to kill you. So he risked his life to obey the Lord. That's something to think about. Jeremiah, we go, oh, what a great prophet. What a great man of God. He risked his life. He suffered in obedience to the Lord. Now let's go into Jeremiah chapter 12 and verse 6. There's people that will say nice things to us. They will compliment us. Sometimes they're sincere. As a pastor especially, we've got to be careful. We'll preach a sermon. Everybody walks out, oh, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. I just, oh, I learned so much. You're such a good pastor. We just really appreciate you. And that's really gratifying, but we've got to be careful. Don't get, don't let yourself be put on a pedestal. And also, this is an interesting verse. Do not believe them, although they may say nice things to you. That doesn't mean you reject compliments, but just give them straight to the Lord. You know, and don't take it too serious, but, but make sure you give that to the Lord and, and appreciate their appreciation. But let's not go too far. Okay. Now, uh, here's something interesting. Jeremiah is not in chronological order. If you look at chapter 13, Jeremiah is in Babylon. It's a story about a waistcoat. Go buy yourself, oh, it's not a waistcoat, a waistband. It's like, a, it's like underwear. You know? so, so wear this around your waist and then take it and go down the Euphrates River after you've worn it for a while. You go down the Euphrates River, that's in Babylon, and stuff it in a rock next to the, that's in the river. And then you go back to it sometime later and the thing's ruined. Okay, uh, I don't want to talk about the waistband. I want to talk about the fact he's in Babylon here in chapter 13. And so <clears throat> be aware of that. He's, this is not in chronological order. But now let's go down to Jeremiah 13 and verse 23. This is the theme of Christianity. This is the Christian message for all of us. The Christian message we can, we can share with people who don't know Jesus. We can share this with people struggling in life, especially you know, when, when I was in prison ministry. This was a really good verse to share. It says, Then you also can do good who are accustomed to doing evil. That's Jeremiah 13, 23. You can do good even though you're accustomed to doing evil. That is Christianity. Because of Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit, because you're born again, because now you have a new nature, then you can stop doing evil and you start doing good. You start, you stop living for the devil, you stop living selfishly for yourself, and you start living for Jesus. That's what the Christian message is all about. And it's possible to do, and it's necessary for all of us to do. Okay, good. Now, go into uh, chapter 14. And again, this is, he's back into speaking to Jerusalem before <laughs> the exile into Babylon. So it's kind of back and forth. But verses 11 and 12 are scary. And I think this is one reason Jeremiah is called the weeping prophet, because look at how he, this is emotional. He said, the Lord said to me, do not pray for the welfare of this people. When they fast, I'm not going to listen to their cry. When they offer burnt offering and grain offering, I'm not going to accept them. Rather, I'm going to make an end of them by the sword, famine, and pestilence. There comes a point in which it doesn't matter. It's too little, too late. God has been telling these people for generations, repent. Stop worshiping idols. Stop rebelling against me. Start, come back to me. Come back to me. And finally, the Lord says, that's it. I've made plans now. Babylon's going to come. 
destroy Jerusalem, tear down the temple, take you into exile because I've got to get your attention and that's how I'm going to do it. You've had your chances. Now that doesn't mean we can look into our situation today and say that's it. We still continue to seek the Lord. We still continue to ask him for mercy. We continue to ask him to, to bless and allow us to repent. But be aware, there will come a time that God says, too little, too late. I've made plans now. Destruction's around the corner, and there's nothing anybody on earth can do about it. That is a very scary, scary truth that we see right here in Jeremiah. Now, in response to this, God has told Jeremiah, it is, you know, forget it. We're, you know, God's judgment is coming on Jerusalem. And he says, oh, but look what the prophets are telling them. They're saying, you will not see sword. You will not see famine. Uh, Thus saith the Lord, I'm giving you lasting peace in this place. You see, it's really important in this day and age especially, for us to have discernment to see which preachers are telling the truth, God is holy, and repent and prepare for judgment, or those that are people pleasers, oh yes, we're having peace and prosperity, nothing bad's going to happen, oh, we, Jesus is going to love you, he loves you, and he's going to save you, and he's going to protect you, you know, <laughs> wait a minute. Which, we need discernment. We live in perilous times. There's a lot of evil around us, a lot of churches that are embracing the ways of the devil. And that's blunt to put it that way, but it's true. And we have to stay, no, we have to stand up for righteousness and, and say judgment is coming on this land. And, and it's certainly not a matter of, oh no, God just loves you, he'll forgive you, peace is coming, wonderful things are coming. When we look around, a blind man can see the perversion that is prevalent in the world, prevalent in our governments, prevalent in many of the so-called churches, people who claim to be Christian that are embracing perversion and promoting perversion. And God has will reach a point. I'm not saying he's at that point yet, but he will reach a point where he says, that's it. I'm now proclaiming judgment. And don't let any preacher tell you that God cannot do that and he won't do that because he's done it before. He's done it for people he loves. He says, I'm going to get your attention. We're going to go through a period of difficulty. I will restore you because in this difficulty, you're going to come back to me. So the time to come back is now. Lord, thank you for all the good things you do for us. Let us be aware of our need to walk in your righteousness let us be aware of your need to have wisdom. We don't boast in our wisdom. We boast that we know you. But have wisdom on how to, to confront the evil that surrounds us. Help us to be light in darkness. And help us to learn from the example of Jeremiah, who even though he was threatened with death, continued to walk in obedience to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.